Wasabi, you guys. Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. This is, I believe, part 8.3. Uh, in this section, we're going to do Taylor series, but we're going to do some tricky manipulation with Taylor series. Okay? Let's go ahead and get started. So we have 1 plus x over 1 minus x, ln of x. Um. I mean, you could do integration by parts and some other manipulations, but uh, it, it'll be very complicated. However, what I'm going to do is, of, of course we know that ln of x, you know, there's no good, clean uh, Taylor series for ln of x. But what we can do is we can make it into a Taylor series by doing a u substitution. Well, kind of a king's rule. Not really... Uh, we're not going to be adding integrals or anything. We're just going to let u equal 1 minus x so that in this case we end up getting um, let's say x and then 2 minus x and then ln of 1 minus x. That's all. And now that's actually okay for me because this is because we can use Taylor series with this and it would go well uh, with this integral so if we go ahead and dive in we know that we know what the Taylor series for this is it was negative I'll go ahead and put the sum at the back n equals to 1 and then 1 over n the x to the power of n is inside so we'll put that here Okay, and then to simplify this, we'll just put 2 over x minus 1 dx. Okay, uh, I'm going to use that negative to rearrange this. And so what I would have 1 over n, and then let's see, I would get something like x to the power of n because I, I use this negative to rearrange this so starting with 1 and then minus 2 x to the power of n minus 1 right okay just be very careful not to miswrite anything 1 over n and then here we have if we do power rule we get n plus 1, n plus 1, minus speed 2xn over n, from 0 to 1. Plug in 0, it's, you know, nothing. Plug in 1, we get 1 over n plus 1, minus uh, 2 and here right so what we have is we have this telescoping series that we've seen and then we have this the sum here right and so our answer is 1 minus here is pi square over 3 okay that's our answer so we have this MIT integral here and this integral you're probably thinking okay what what on earth is this how does this have to do with Taylor series so let's first uh, simplify this right I I'm not a I'm, I'm not a fan of combinatorics so I don't see this as a combinatoric way I'm more of an algebraic type of person so um, the way I'm going to simplify this is I'm going to put it in terms of factorials. Okay? So by definition of, of this binomial thing, uh, this is n plus 3 factorial of n factorial 3 factorial. Okay? And then x to the power of n dx. And then when we simplify this, this is equal to 1 6 of 0 half 
and the sum. And what we have here is like, if we simplify the factorials, we end up getting like n plus 3, um, n plus 2, n plus 1, and n factorial will cancel out. And so we're left with x to the power of n dx. Okay, but what is this sum? What is this sum here? Right, we don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. But we can figure it out what it is. We can. And here's how. Okay. So just consider this, this series here, right? This is technically x cubed and then uh, the geometric series, right? That's all this is. And then here, what this is, so if you just kind of picture this, if you derive it, right, take the derivative of this, then you get n plus 3 of like x to the power of n plus 2, right? But derive it again, you get n plus 2, x to the power of n plus 1. Derive it the th third time, you get n plus 1 of x to the power of n, okay? And so this, what exactly what we have is technically the third derivative of x cubed 1 minus x. That's literally what this is. Okay? So, all right, so that's so that's pretty much what we have. We have our sum is literally the third derivative of x cubed over 1 minus x. Okay. Cool. So now we're going we're going to go ahead and put that in. Let me just kind of clean this, clean this, and then we're going to substitute this. This is exactly what we have. Wow, I was not expecting uh, transparency, um, but that's what we have. So now we can easily solve this. This is technically one six of well the second derivative of x cubed over one minus x from one half to zero. Okay? So now we just find the second derivative of this pretty much. And so let's see. Let's we can actually simplify this a lot nicer just to easily see how to just to easily derive this. Um, this is if we do a minus one plus one, right? x cubed minus 1 is can be factored out of x minus 1, uh, whatever. So pretty much we just will end up having 1 over 1 minus x minus and then x squared plus x plus 1. Okay. All right, now that's easier to derive. We can easily see our second derivative here. So again, if you don't... Uh, understand how this came again x cubed minus x minus 1 plus 1 okay and x cubed minus 1 can be factored in x minus 1 x squared plus x plus 1 okay now we can go ahead and take the second derivative second derivative of this let's see that will be so that's going to be like uh, square 2 over 1 minus x cubed. And then here we will have, I think it's just 2, minus 2. Right, because if we do a second derivative, we get 2x and we get 2. Right, everything else will just end up being a constant and 0. So... Um, I guess this is it. So 
you just plug in half and zero. Uh, let's see, a half, one half, that's going to be one eighth, 16 minus two. Right? Is that, did I do that correctly? Eight, two times 16 minus two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 14, and then minus, uh, plug in zero. You're just going to get, oh, you're just going to get, because you plug in zero, you get two minus two, which also zero. Okay. So then I guess our answer is seven thirds. Okay. And there we go. So we have some exponential functions here, but with some random x there. Huh. Let me go ahead and turn everything in terms of e to the negative x, except for that x right there. So, and let me show you why. Well, I mean, you should already know why. I mean, geometric series, right? We need that. We need it to be e to the negative x rather than e to the x because of geometric series. Now, we can actually find, uh, well, let me generalize it for you. Technically, uh, e to the negative x, uh, negative kx, uh, 1 minus e to the negative x is going to equal to n equals k to infinity e to the negative x, right? You know, uh, geometric series, right? The first term, depending on what your first term is, the first term is on top. Um, be careful, I would say. Um, let's see. Just want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. There are sometimes, like, whenever you have like something like this, uh, you have to be very careful. You might have to want to add like something like that. But I think I think we're safe. So for now, what we have here is we only have e to the negative x, 1 minus e to the negative x here. And I believe that's just n equals to 1 for e to the negative nx. Okay, so instead of just writing the geometric series and then having this uh, bother you in your integration, you could just put it into your sum. Like literally put it inside your sum and then you don't have to worry about it. Right? It's, I think it will be a lot, a lot easier to handle with that. So, um, in fact, you can actually, it's not just this that we'll be using. We can actually distribute this. And so, on this side, you'll end up having negative 2x, like that. And now you can use the sum n equals to 2 rather than dealing with... Uh, more integration by parts. Does that kind of make sense? And, and let me show you why I like it this way. Okay, so of course we distribute this, so then we'll end up having, um, let's see, zero to infinity, All right? We have x, and then now, uh, with e to the negative x, uh, e to the negative two x, right? We have the sum n equals to two, of e to the negative nx plus, and then I'll, I'll just write x again, and then the sum n equals to 1 e to the negative x dx. Okay, technically you're dealing with the same integral, so let's just focus on how do I solve this portion here. You see how easy that is? Instead of just working with two integration by parts with two different integrals, you can just stick with one integral here. Okay, so if I only focus on this here, let's see, I get it's integration by parts, e to the negative nx, uh, let's see, negative 1 over n, 1 over n squared. Ah, so I guess this gives me e to the negative nx of, let's see, of negative x over n minus 1 over n squared. From, uh, in, from zero to infinity, and this all gives me what? This whole thing would just give me one over n squared, right? Oh, okay. 
So then in that case, what I have here is this whole, this whole integral is equal to, well, I get two different sums. I get two different sums of n equals to 2, of 1 over n squared, plus the sum of 1 over n squared. You see how fast that is? It's super fast. And now I can just go ahead and dive in. Okay, this is pi squared over 6. This is a pi squared over 6 minus 1. And so the answer I get is pi over, th um, not pi cubed, uh, pi over square over 3 minus 1. And that's my answer. Okay, so again, uh, you can take advantage of the initial values, and you can make your integrals a lot simpler to deal to deal with uh, mentally. Uh, you know, it helps you kind of solve the integral a lot faster and uh, preventing you from making more mistakes. Okay. Whoa. Okay, we have an MIT integral here. How on earth are we going to apply? Taylor series with this. There's a 2 e to the x minus 1. That 2 is really blocking us. So how do we deal with this? So this is very, very sneaky to uh, to see. It's very hard to see. Uh, so I don't blame you. Um, but what we're going to do is I want x equal to negative ln of 1 minus u. Okay, e to the x equals to 1 over 1 minus uh, 1 over 1 minus u. e to the negative x 1 minus u 1 minus e to the negative x. So pretty much I'm letting u equal 1 minus e to the negative x. So technically we're just kind of multiplying everything in terms of net e to the negative x, technically. Uh, however, it's it's the inside that's kind of like blocking us. So instead, we're going to do kind of a, a forced u substitution. So since x is negative ln of 1 minus u, dx is equal to du over 1 minus u. Now, this is going to give us from 0 to 1, and now we start plugging things in. We have ln of 2, 1 over 1 minus u, minus 1. This is the trickiest part because it's very hard to, to see this ahead. Uh, 1 over 1 minus u, minus 1, and 1 minus u. We have a lot of 1 minus u's to cancel out. Uh, so when you can't, so when you simplify this, you end up getting let's say zero to one. Uh, I'm just going to simplify this further in my head. Um, one minus u. Uh, that's going to give me ln. Uh, I'll separate it. U plus one minus ln of one minus u. And this this really nicely cancels out. Uh, to just u, du. Okay. And and I mean we we know how to do this. We've seen this. We know how to do this, right? Uh, however, I'm very lazy, so instead of leaving it like this, note that this is actually equal to inverse tanj. Okay. So what we have, technically, is 2 inverse tanch of u over u du. And we've seen this integral before, right? We've seen the Taylor series of this. This is technically infinity to n equal to 0. Let's see, from 0 to 1, this gives us uh, what u to the power of 2n of 2n plus 1 du. This gives us a Taylor series n equal to 0 of 2n plus 1 square. Uh, if you don't remember, this special sum is equal to pi square over 8. And so our final answer is pi square over 4.
Okay, and that's what that integral equals. Very sneaky. This is this is a very difficult thing to see. This substitution is very hard to see because that two is really blockading us from using Taylor series. So uh, letting u equal one minus e to the negative x, pretty much we're we're multiplying top and bottom by e to the negative x, and then u subbing one minus e to the negative x, which forces us to have this and then whatever we have in the uh, numerator, okay? We have a very intimidating integral from uh, Cambridge University Integration B. So, how on earth do we deal with this? Okay, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Let's take small steps. Let's multiply top and bottom by x, right? Because that's, that's like our first instinct that you would think of is x squared plus 1, then x, and then with simplifying this gives us, let's see, like x squared, x squared plus 1 over x. Okay. So that's that's all right. Don't don't freak out. So there is something nice about this. We can split this. We can split this integral. Ln square. I'm sorry. Ln of x squared plus one. X squared plus one. Right. This is an easy integral. It's just u substitution. And then we have this side here. Zero to one. And we have x ln of x, x squared plus 1. This one we have to deal with, right? This is, this is what we need to focus on right here. So how, how do we compute this portion of the integral? So if we do integration by parts, ln square, uh, I'm sorry, ln of x, x over x squared plus 1, we get negative 1 over x. And here we get a half of ln x squared plus 1, okay? And, of course, if we plug in bounds of 1 and 0, plug in 1, you get 0. Plug in 0, you get infinity, I'm sorry, negative infinity, 0. L'Hopital's rule, that's just going to end up with 0, because we've seen that before, right? x ln of x plug in, you know, let the limit of x approach to 0 x ln of x of 0, I'm sorry, 0 times ln of 0 is going to end up equaling to 0 when we uh, when we take the limit of x approaching to 0. Uh, but we, we've, we've done that so many times where it's just, it's just kind of uh, becoming like reoccurring to us. So here, uh, this, uh, this integral is just a u substitution, so that's going to end up like ln square over two, so we're just gonna, so we'll end up having like what? Oh no, 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 ooh, be careful, I'm sorry. Be very careful. This is one over two, uh, half of u du. So we'll actually end up having like two, one. So this would be one fourth of ln square of two, okay. I had to reassure that I was thinking about a different answer, but be very careful. It's one fourth, not one half of ln square. So it's one fourth ln square of two. And then here we have, let's see, well that minus carries. So distributing that negative, we end up having ln of x squared plus one over two dx. I'm sorry, with the x at the bottom. And now this is just Taylor series, right? That's just Taylor series. So we can actually implement uh, Taylor series with this. So this would be like, what? Uh, let me take out the half. This would be like infinity n equals to one, negative one, n plus one over n, and then zero to one. You get x to the power of 2n minus 1 because of that x here, dx. Okay, so what we have is 1 fourth ln square of 2 and then plus 
And then we have our Taylor series, one half from n equal to one to infinity. We have negative one n plus one over what? Let's see. We'll have plus one. So we we'll have two n. Then with n squared. So we have two n squared at the bottom. You have to be very careful. You have to. It's a lot of constant juggling, especially at the advanced level of integration b. You just have to get used to uh, juggling, being careful with your uh, numbers. Uh, so that's why I'm a little slow because I I have to kind of be careful and think twice. So two n square and a half. Okay. Don't forget about this half. Don't forget that we have another half because of the constant. So. Now what? So this integral, we, we've seen this a lot, right? It's like, what, pi square, pi square over 12. Yeah, pi square over 12. We've seen this in a, uh, this sum a lot. So our final answer turns out to be 1 fourth of ln square of 2 plus pi square over 48. And that is our answer. This is our last integral. And this one is also very tricky, and you must be very careful as well. So how do we solve this one? OK. So let's kind of, so we need this to be 0 to 1 so that we can use Taylor series, right? So splitting it from 0 to 1, we have ln square of x plus 1 square, right? From 1 to infinity, if we let u equal 1 over x, we can imagine already that this is going to be ln of 1 over x, but it's being squared, so that will do nothing. Then at the bottom, we get 1 plus 1 over x, or 1 over x plus 1, but then our du is going to multiply it with x squared. So it's just going to come back as x plus 1 squared. So when we do an inversion, nothing really changes except for one thing, the bound. OK, so that's, that's the greatest use of inversion, is not only it changes the function, but it helps us change the bounds. And now everything is from 0 to 1. And now because of that, we have the rights to use Taylor series. But we're not going to use it yet. <coughs> we're, we have to do something about this. I'm going to do integration by parts. Okay, and That's another tricky move to see. We're going to do integration by parts, ln square of x, 1 over x plus 1 square. And this is just for me to simplify that log. So 2 ln of x over x, and then we also have x plus 1. Okay, and You see how it simplified that logarithm? So that integration by parts just helps me simplify down the power of the log. So now we have 2, uh, we have negative x plus 1, uh, ln square over x plus 1. And then this is from 0 to 1. Plug in 1, it's 0. Plug in 0, um, oh no. We have a we have a limit blockage here, right? So unfortunately, we have to keep that for later. We're gonna have to keep that for later, okay? So with that, we can go ahead and write down our other form here. So we have this is plus. Let's see. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Be very careful. This is two. Uh, two times, that's why I put a 2 here, it's 2 times this, because we have this, so it's 2 times, then we have another 2 here. Okay, be very careful, you have this plus this, this is 2 times the integral of this. Okay, and so we have ln of x, x, x plus 1, dx. Okay? And of course, we can definitely do partial fractions with this. This is going to equal 
four is zero to one. This is we've seen this so many times. Ln of x over x minus ln of x x plus one dx. Okay. So again, we're st we're starting to see things repetitively. Uh, again, we cannot. Well, we can compute the we can compute one, but we can't compute zero, right? That's going to diverge. So we have to save that for now. Uh, we know that zero uh, completely, you know, zero plus one, it's just going to be one. Uh, so for now, we're, j we're just, we're going to have to save this um, here. So I, we can actually write it like this. And we have like negative two x plus one because that diverges. So, but don't worry, we have another integral that might diverge, which I can see here. Um, so in this case, let's see, I have to be very careful what I'm doing. Uh, so we, this is an easy integral, right? We know what this is. This is, um, so it's plus, let's see, that's gonna be two ln, I'm just gonna dive in. 2 ln square, 0 to 1, we can plug in 1 and plug in, but we can't plug in 0 because that's going to diverge. Alright, so this this part here is what's going to help us save this part. Okay, And I can already see that, that this is going to cancel out and converge. Um, and then we're left with here minus 4. So when I do integration by parts, I get positive, and I get ln of x plus 1 over x. Right. Derive this, integrate 1 over x plus 1, and you get this result. That's a 1 at the upper bound. Okay. This limit here, this is just ln square of, well, 2 ln square of 1 minus x plus 1, right? This is going to give me, uh, let's x plus 1 x over x plus 1, right? And then when you plug in 0, it's, it's you know, this is going to be 0 and that's going to be infinity. And so when you do L'Hopital's rule, this, this is technically, this is technically this. And we know this is equal to 0. This is literally this. So because of that, it's just going to equal to 0, okay? So this whole thing, this whole limit is going to equal to zero. So now we're only focused on this, and we know what to do with this. This is just basic Taylor series. So we got four, and the sum, n equals to one to infinity. We have negative one to n plus one over n, and then we have from zero to one, x to the power of n minus one dx, right? And then this is going to give us for uh, negative 4, I'm just going to use that, separate out that negative and square. Oh, it's, you know, pi square over 12 again. Uh, that negative cancels out with that. I guess I could just go like this, make that positive. Right. And so now pi square over 12 times 4, the answer. Our final answer is pi square over three. That is it. Okay. A lot of tricky moves. There are so many tricky moves about this integral. This integral is very tricky, right? We have the inversion and reminding yourself that you're dealing with two times the integral of this instead of one. Second trick, integration by parts. Right. Another thing, a third, third trick. Uh, well, it's not really a trick. It's more like, like danger zones. Right. Things that so tricky to see. This was hard to see. The inversion, integration by parts is hard to see because when we look at ln square, we're just kind of like, we get problem shock from this. So, integration by parts, and then this limit blockage here. We're like, oh crap, this diverges. Oh no, what do I do? Again, another limit blocking, and then 
uh, dealing with this uh, limit as well. Not that many people would see it like this, uh, but when you deal with limits a lot, it's kind of you, you kind of get the a sense of uh, you kind of get like a computational sense of limits. You just have to do it a lot of times. <laughs> um, let's see, and then the rest is just kind of basic Taylor series. So oh yeah, and then and then this is also hard to see as well. Uh, doing partial fractions underneath a function, so uh, a lot. It, this integral is very evil. It has uh, devastated a lot of competitors. So uh, this this integral is indeed the, one of one of the trickiest Taylor series integrals. Okay. All right. That is about it. I hope that's very helpful. Again, practice and get comfortable with very sneaky integrals like these. You know, rewatch the integral and try the integral yourself. Get comfortable uh, with the process. Okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next part.